Man, it has been way too long since I've had my nails painted. And they've been through heck since then, and I am so sick of it. You guys get to watch me paint my nails. Ah! And basically, this is the plan. These things, oh my gosh. Okay, so the last time I had them painted was uh, for Christmas. I think I painted them like the day before Christmas and I actually used the gel uh, gel polish. Uh, you can search my channel for the video where I showed how I do that. I have like an at home lamp. Um, and it was just like white with glitter in between, normal polish glitter in between. And maybe that was the issue. It looked pretty good for that day. And the next couple days after that, I guess. But then um, we went to Phoenix to help my grandma move out of her house. She'd been there for 40 years. Um, and you could tell, like, you know, everything that you have bought in the last 40 years. Like, imagine still owning a lot of stuff. And, yeah, it's just a lot of stuff uh, that we had to sort through and pack and donate and throw away. Um as the the lady the delicate lady who was at the time 13 weeks pregnant maybe 14 um yeah so i wasn't doing any of the heavy lifting myself that was my husband and my dad um but i was still organizing papers and stuff in the office like papers like um old bills old insurance policy paperwork and like just like statements from banks bank statements from every single month for how many years um printed out emails that were just conversations of things she didn't want to forget or there was like a whole box of printed out chain emails from the year 2000 um yeah it was just you know stuff that like you don't think to go through and go through all your stuff and throw out things you don't need and so you know it was just a lot of stuff and uh yeah so i was able to help doing that and i was happy to we were able to get rid of a lot of superfluous paper but you know that dries your hands out um and i wasn't like paying attention to my nails that wasn't the priority that week um so the gel polish ended up chipping a couple places and then i tend to get really obsessive about my nails and like i pick at them and if there's a little bit of an edge i kind of rub at it and i kind of rub my nail over that edge until it gets worse and worse. Um, that's all the time. That's not even just when they're painted and chipped. Like, um, that's what I've been doing the last couple weeks as well without the polish on. Um, so they ended up like sort of detaching from my nail. So I was actually able to peel a couple of them off. And then I kind of made a point of doing that to the rest. And I know you shouldn't do that. I know it's bad. Um, and I've been so good, but I was like, you know, the wilderness of the packing world for like a week and not really worrying about it too much. Uh, and I was like, ah, I don't want to have just polish on a couple of my nails and not the rest. So I'm just going to pull it off. And it actually did come up. So I guess it wasn't on as well as it should have been for gel polish. But it all came up and then my nails have been bare ever since then. That was like a couple days before New Year's. Sorry, there's a helicopter outside. Um, yeah, so it is, I'm filming this on February 2nd. So it's been a full month and a few days since the last time I had polish on my nails. And I, it's been a while since it's been that long. Basically when they're, they're not, they're very weak. My nails are very thin. They tend to peel a lot and um, they chip and they've been, you know, and I've been doing other things like moving our house, like moving into the house, organizing stuff in our house in the office and just like more practical and uh, worried about than, than worrying about my nails, you know, like just worrying about moving a physical object around um, and not worrying about what it's going to do to my hands. And so I'll end up just like shoving my hand in somewhere and then I'll hear like a crack and great now i've lost you know another corner of one of my nails and so i keep uh trimming them filing them really really short 
um, every week or two thinking, all right, this is the weekend. I'm going to get the painting done. I'm going to paint my nails and then I'll be able to sort of, you know, let them grow out again because giving them the polish, you know, it makes them a little bit stronger, some extra layers. Um, and so when I do that, you know, sudden movements, if it bumps into something, it's not just going to snap, hopefully. It'll uh, have a little bit more structural integrity. Um, so yeah, I have not gotten that done because other things have just taken precedence. Plus I wanted to film this video. I thought it might be fun. Um, not that you're going to learn anything. This is just a chatty chatty video. And since I couldn't think of anything less relevant to talk about, I'm mostly just going to talk about my nails or if anything else occurs to me. Um, so yeah, I'm, it's February 2nd. I have eaten dinner. I just finished filming my February setup video, which went up on Thursday, so you saw that. Um, if you haven't, it's going to be linked at the end of the video. And so, yeah, I'm basically the reason that I need to get this done is because I have a party tomorrow. My mother is turning 60. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this because she does watch my videos. Hi, mom. Happy birthday. I hope the party was great. Um, and I just, you know, I figure it's not like my poli my nails have to be polished before a party. I'm not that vain, but uh, if there's, if I'm going to take a, uh, I don't know, a cue from something to be my trigger to like actually get it done, then this will be it. Uh, so since the last time I filed them, which was uh, maybe earlier this week, I thought I might have a chance to film this earlier this week, but uh, did not take that opportunity. I think instead probably chose to watch Daredevil with my husband because, you know, priorities. Um, since then they've grown a little bit and also just like the edge gets a little, it's not strong, my nails aren't strong. And so the edges get a little bit ragged. So I'm just kind of filing them. Not so much to get the shape right, though in a couple cases, yes. Um, but to kind of get the edge smoother. But you can, I mean, okay, I was gonna say you can tell. I can tell that the nails on my left hand are shorter than the nails on my right hand because I did them, I did the nails on my right hand like a couple days before I filed the nails on my left hand and then I still filed them to the same like place instead of checking and making them match. So yeah, every time I file them to like a length that's kind of feminine and not super like short to the point of like, like I've been filing them down to the quick because they keep getting chipped or splitting or whatever. Like currently my middle finger on my right hand here is a little bit like that, but I'm going to try to sort of ignore it and hope that the polish keeps things strong so that it can gr keep growing out. They're also a lot rounder right now than usual because of that. Um, it would make no sense to have it all the way down to the quick in the middle, but then sticking out on the sides. Um, it feels like that's just going to catch on something, but I usually do like the squircle or whatever they call it shape where you kind of file straight across and then curve the corners. Um, I feel like the rounder and shorter it is, the more it kind of reminds me of my childhood of not caring and basically, um, man, okay, so you used to take uh, Irish fiddle lessons. Like, the fiddle and the violin are the same instrument, but it's just the kind of music you play with it. Violin is classical and fiddle is folk. So we used to do Irish dancing, like competitively growing up, but in order to compete, you have to be an amateur, so you can't get paid. So come March when we would do shows, um, we took up instruments so that we could get paid to play the instruments in the shows and then the dancing was just thrown in because, I don't know, we love dancing so much that we would do it for free. Um, and the younger kids who hadn't learned to play an instrument yet, we would give them like a little bit of a gift for helping out. Um, 
that's that's how we justified things if the powers that were ever came knocking <laughs> asking about our uh, amateur status we would be able to tell them oh no no we're not getting paid to dance uh what was i saying yeah so we used to play fiddle and if you've ever played the violin you have you'll know that you need to keep your nails very short because when you push down on the strings you do that in a straight down motion you don't go across like this you go straight straight down um and so you can't have nails getting in the way because otherwise the string won't go down all the way and it'll sound really tinny and wrong you have to stick your, your finger all the way down to the fret is that right no not fret fingerboard i guess they don't have frets that's the point um and we would always forget to cut our nails the week before, you know the day before class in the morning before the lesson um and so i would show up and go ah my nails are too long and so i would just i would literally bite them um these four fingers i would just bite them down um, and then I often would find myself with like these jagged bitten nails um, just in my day-to-day -day life and I would find anything rough in my world around me to sort of <laughs> file them on like uh, the sidewalk or just like a piece of rough fabric if I was wearing blue jeans or like upholstery or something uh, that I could just kind of rub it against until the sharpest edges that were catching on things were... Uh, Kind of smoothed away. This is how much I cared about my nails as a child. I know that right now, the way I'm talking about how obsessive I am about my nails, um, that might come as a shock to you. But that's the way things were when I was a child. And I didn't start painting my nails until the summer of 2012. And I think it really just kind of came to a head with um, just like I had been biting them for so long. They were always so short and gross and um, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try painting them and then maybe I'll be able to grow them out. Um, and so really like since then I pretty much quit biting my nails cold turkey, but I still pick at them because the edges bug me if they're uneven and it's just an obsessive thing. So I don't know, but I don't like if my manicure hasn't been compromised by like a chip or something then um, I won't like actually tear at the nail or at the uh, the polish. I just make a point of keeping one of these emery boards in my purse or in my planner, on my desk at work, on my nightstand, like everywhere. I get just the packs and I just, these are everywhere in my life. Um, so that if something does happen and I get a break or a chip, I have something on hand to smooth it out officially so that it doesn't bother me as much. Because having any sort of jagged edges really bugs me. This is the one that broke most recently, so I'm not filing it, I'm just buffing the edge. So um, I linked these buffer blocks in my gel polish video. I got them off Amazon. And it came in like a huge pack that I've only used a few of so far. Um, they're pretty good, because they've got this rough side and then this softer side, which I don't really use as much, honestly, but I think this is my longest nail. It needs a little bit of shaping. Because it was getting really peely. That's the thing that bugs me the most. It's not the chipping, it's the peeling, like the layers of your nail delaminate. Um, and so then I kind of, maybe I shouldn't, peel them up but like I kind of do so that I have just a solid surface to paint on but then it's a weaker surface so eh. but yeah this one was kind of peeling in a weird way where it was just getting like dirt underneath and so I was like fortunately it wasn't a um, lot this way I was able to sort of file off most of the damage but yeah this is why I paint my nails man people who say that keeping your nails painted is bad for them because they never get a chance to breathe like they must have toenails on their face well even my no my toenails are worse they must all be men men have much better nails it's not fair I was reading this guy's blog once he was just like a man he was like married and everything um to a woman uh he just it was a, a man who enjoyed nail polish and I don't think he would wear it out in public very often. He just enjoyed it at home. 
and he actually was like a nail blogger and so he would um like buy different polishes and he would swatch them and he would rate them and it was so hilarious that like even though he was into nail polish he was still very much a man the way he rated stuff was like so much more manly you know masculine masculine than the way that most female nail bloggers would be like oh it's you know it's got all these qualities of its you know finish and its color and it's very similar to this dupe or whatever he was like on a scale of one to five in these five different categories and then he would rank them um <laughs> and i just thought that was really funny how like even in a hobby that is usually associated with one gender over the other um when a man does partake in it a predominantly female hobby he puts his own masculine spin on it i thought that was cool but then i uh yeah i managed to sort of break away from the beauty blogging sphere i used to you know read a lot of like uh what was it called nouveau cheap uh, I was talking about like inexpensive polish, uh, like makeup and stuff. I went through like a period of time where I was just going to the drugstore like twice a week and just buying stuff. Um, but now I really just prefer having room for stuff. And I pretty much only buy polish in my monthly julep boxes. And that's only because they email me once a month and I'd have to decide whether I want to take it or not. And sometimes I like them. That's when I get my new polish. I should do a review of julep at some point, like show you my julep collection. I should add that to my YouTube list. All right. All right. So I think I am all polished up. I'm not sorry. I'm all buffed and filed for a change and it's going to stay that way. I'm going to go wash my hands and then come back with my cuticle nipper. I'll be right back. So cuticles are another area that I definitely obsess over and I am not really above biting my cuticles if they are, if I have like a hangnail or something. Um, yeah, I, my husband knows that it bugs me and so he'll like rub his hangnails against my hand when he's like holding my hand and then um, he'll like make a big point of freaking out if I go to grab the nippers and actually deal with them for him. But then of course he'll still admit that like it's nicer when there's no sharp edges but I think I have this camera set up just about right where my face is actually really close to my nails right now but you can't see it I'll have to remember these zoom settings for next time rounder than I would have liked. All right. So yeah, just getting rid of some of this dead skin. Uh, I sometimes actually do keep these nippers in my purse as well because yeah, cuticles bug me and the dry skin that you get around your, um, you know, your middle finger, your callus or whatever, where you, uh, where your pen goes. Everyone has a callus here, right? On their dominant hand. Uh, yeah, you get really dry cuticles there. So I'm really just getting rid of like the bits that are dangling from the edge. I know they say not to, not to clip and I usually push to like just as a, one of those fidgety habits as well, push my cuticles back and then whatever is still dangling is what I clip. So you just have to be careful. But these things work pretty well. I think these are Revlon brand. I'm just getting rid of some dead skin because I don't want this dead skin underneath my polish making things complicated either. Alright, sorry, I'm paying attention for a change. Okay. You know what? I don't have a cotton ball. I have a cotton ball. All right, so even though I did wash my hands, my, my desk is covered in like nail filing. Uh, even though I just wash my, wash my hands, I always start by sort of priming them with a little bit of remover. 
This is in the, uh, the Zoya Remove Plus bottle because it's an awesome bottle, but it's just the cheapy purple remover from the store. I use that for normal polish. And then I use the acetone for, like the pure acetone, for more difficult, stubborn jobs, like gel polish and glitter. And for cleaning up cuticles, which you will see in a bit. All right, so it's been so long and I've been psyching myself out about messing up with something complicated and difficult like a, uh, like a crumb polish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna use this is a, um, what's it called? Textured polish. This is called Zoya Pixie Dust in the color Godiva. And this basically looks like sand when it goes on. Um, but the point is it doesn't need a top coat because it's like textured, so that would ruin it. And um, I definitely wanted something that was going to be nude and not show off how short my nails are right now. This is my favorite base coat. It's called Orly Bonder. It's rubberized. It's basically like a sticky base coat that uh, like it doesn't dry all the way. And I bought the bottle at, I don't know, beauty supply store or something. But then I got the refill thingy. It's like a squeeze bottle of it at the Korean beauty supply, or sorry, Vietnamese beauty supply store, excuse me. Um, you know, the one that's like the wholesale place. Um, and yeah, so I, I got that like a couple years ago and haven't run out yet. So it's awesome. And this stuff is great too because it doesn't get gloopy. But it works really well for me for long lasting manicures with normal polish. Um, yeah. I really have found that you get what you pay for in brand names of nail products, like actual polishes and stuff. I don't know about like cuticle oil or whatever, but um, for your base coat, your top coat and the actual polish itself, the brand names really just are better. So you can get all the Sally Hansen you want, but you know, I mean, if you're intending to just like wear it for three days, then that's absolutely fine. Like if you just love the act of painting your, your nails so much that that's all you need, then yeah, I've been there. Um, and as I was getting started, I just loved the actual act of painting my nails so much. Um, just about as much as having the actual polish on. Like I would just sit there going, oh, I, I love this color, but I really want to try on that other color I got, just got. So it wasn't a problem because I was spending like 99 cents on a bottle of polish and it would wear for two or three days for chipping and then I would replace it. But now I'm at a point in my life where I just want something that's a little bit longer lasting. And I have found specifically that Julep works really well for me. Whatever it's in their formula lasts me like a week. All of their colors basically. Um, let me shift forward a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not sure how good the resolution is, but if you can see really closely, my fingers are really dry, but I don't usually like wearing lotion, or putting on lotion before I polish because then it's just like, you're just gonna rub it right off with the acetone before you start. And so I just make a point of lotioning like the next morning or once it's mostly dry, depending on what time I'm actually doing it. So. Yep. And I've been using lotion more often. It's just that time of year, I guess. I'm making a habit of putting lotion on my abdomen every night to avoid stretch marks. I'm still gonna get stretch marks, but that way I actually get it on my hands too. Because the lotion I love the most is in the other room, so I can't show you, but it's uh, Palmer's Shea Butter. And it's just got a really nice neutral scent. It smells kind of like, I don't know, nature. I don't know what shea butter smells like or where it comes from, actually, at all. But, um, yeah, I just, it 
sense. A fine enough scent. But um, it's like kind of greasy, oily at first, but it just, it makes your skin feel so soft. And I also have like a Bath and Body Works Shea Butter Formula that works fine, but it's so perfumed. That one lives at work. And I use it on my hands when my hands are feeling dry at work. But I feel like lately, and this might all just be in my head, but I feel like it's starting to give me kind of an allergic reaction or something because of the whatever scents are in it. It just feels a little bit tingly. Uh, so I'm wondering if maybe that's a problem. So I'm, I've been using like a, a Jergens or something. I forget exactly. Something that I got in a small bottle at the, the trial travel section of Walmart that I carry in my purse. Uh, so it is also at work with me because it's in my purse. And I've been using that instead. So these nails are not long enough to wrap the tips. Generally my nails are not long enough to wrap the tips until I got my gel polish kit. They never were. And so I've never really learned that technique very well. It just kind of gets messy if I try to do it. But anyway, right now they are not at that point. And I'm just, I'm just putting a color on here. When I say color, I'm using that in a very generous way. Um, there's a little bit of glitter and some texture. If you all have never used a textured polish before, like, it's definitely a fad thing. This is like, these hit the market maybe, what, two, three years ago now? I don't even know. Um, it's like the last trend I caught before I kind of stopped paying attention. Um, I have a few. I have a blue one that I got at the drugstore. Then I have this one, and then I have a black one from Julep, and I think that's it. But I really do like this one because of, like, it's it's easy. Um, it dries pretty quickly because, like, that's part of the formula. And then the color is just, you know, basically the color of my skin. It's slightly more yellow toned, but uh, really quite close. So it's really easy to wear, like, if I mess it up a little bit. It's very forgiving, you know? Because of the texture, the thickness of the application or whatever, the doesn't have to be perfectly level or anything like that, so it's very forgiving that way. And then if it does chip, it's still gonna bother me because I'll know about it and I'll be able to feel the part that's chipped off, but um, it's not like it's gonna show and so I can usually convince myself to ignore it in favor of keeping the rest of my nails pretty and polished. Uh, so yeah, it's easy in situations like this where I just I really feel like I just desperately need to wear something on my nails for a change especially before this party but I don't really feel like I want to dedicate myself to something that's gonna have a potential to get messed up because like I love the look of like a cream polish that doesn't have any glitter or anything in it it's just like an opaque color it's so classy but every tiny little mistake, brush marks um, and stuff like that just shows up. And then if it's a light color, it doesn't take that long before, like any cream polish, a lot of polishes really, but creams do this the most. We'll get these like hairline fractures and I don't see people complaining about it very often and definitely nobody with any solutions as to a way to avoid that but it gets these hairline fractures and then if it's a light color, there's like micro particles of dust or dirt that will collect in those hairline fractures and just make it look like these black stripes across your like light colored nail. And that just drives me insane. So that's why I prefer something with a little bit of shimmer. I'm not usually a glitter person. In fact, when I say that, I hate glitter so much. I worked a seasonal job at Michael's one year uh, over Christmas and if you're familiar with like the way Michael's has their um, like floral department, it's like not real flowers, it's the, the silk flowers and stuff. 
well, during Christmas, and maybe it's not every year, maybe I just got unlucky, but they had all of these different things, these tiny little sprigs of like uh, Christmas floral, but they were just like, I don't know why lime is a Christmas color now, but all these different colors, you know, purple and lime are the new Christmas colors, but also red and green and silver and gold. And, and they were just coated, literally coated in glitter. Like in multiple, like they had just taken a piece of a plastic leaf sprig, dipped it in glue and then glitter and then glue and then glitter and then glue and then glitter for good measure. And then they would just sort of put another light dusting of glitter on top so that it would get everywhere. Um, and it was, oh my gosh, I hated it so much. People were going and, I mean, it was, Michael's has really good um, clearance prices on their Christmas stuff. Like, you know, every week leading up to Christmas, they discount stuff more and more until it's like 70, 80% off decor the week before Christmas, something like that. Um, so people would go in and they would collect all these different little sprigs and things. And who knows, they're probably making wreaths. I guess that's what you do with them. My gosh, can you imagine a wreath just made of glitter? Like your entire... Your entryway into your house and the patio in front of your house would just literally be covered in glitter the entire year after that. Uh, okay, uh, it would get everywhere, um, all over the floor, but I wasn't really doing the sweeping stuff. I was mostly cashiering. So people would bring them and they would plop them on the counter. And then I would have to pick each one up individually, scan its little barcode, which was like attached on a tag uh, to the sprig and then stick it in a bag. This was like way pre bag law. So we still gave out bags. Oh no, Michael still gives out bags, but anyway. Um, and so just people would come through and they wouldn't, they wouldn't buy one, you know, you don't just buy one tiny little sprig of glitter, glitter plant. It's the, uh, the genus Gliterus Gliterus. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it would just get everywhere. It would get all over the counter. The glitter would just be in piles. And so I would sort of try to dust things off between customers until I realized that the glitter on the counter that I was dusting off was giving me cuts on my hands. And it was just painful and it was, you know, glitter gets everywhere and it sticks to you. I would come home just covered in the stuff. I finally figured out the best way to do it was to take the little envelope that you put used coupons in and I would use that to brush off the counter like a little broom. Oh gosh, that is what, like, I wasn't a huge fan of glitter before that, especially not things that are just dripping glitter like that, but that really cemented my feelings about glitter. So anything that has loose glitter stuck on top of it, where it has the potential of like falling out and getting everywhere, yeah, hate that very much. So I think I was going to say that I don't like cream polishes, I don't like glitter, um, so I generally tend to go for something in between, like a sort of a shimmer polish with like micro glitter, because that's just easier to remove. Glitter polish is a pain to remove because the glitter gets in the way of the acetone doing its business because the glitter is just a piece of plastic and it's not going to dissolve nearly as quickly or really at all. And then you end up having to sort of grind it off with a piece of cotton. It's just a pain. And it takes as long to get off as it does to put on. Like, removing gel polish is sometimes easier than removing glitter. And I know people are going to say, oh, f use the foil method, use whatever. Maybe peel off base coats, I guess, are like the only way that I'm okay with. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll just try it, you know, but no. Generally try to avoid really glittery, glittery polishes with like the big chunks, you know, your hex glitters and your, I don't know. You know, people are big fans. I am not one. I'm saying that like this has glitter in it, but it's like small pieces and so it's not as inhibitive to removal. Unfortunately, even though it's a textured polish, it doesn't tend to like fall off. That would be annoying if my hands were just like magic wand of glitter falling everywhere. Okay. So you kind of apply this nice and a thick coat. 
coat. And so it looks all flat and shiny when it's first applied and then it dries really quick. You're not going to be able to see this. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a close-up macro shot and I will make that the thumbnail of this video. So you'll have already seen what that looks like before you clicked on it. Um, the last step. So like I said, I don't have to put top coat. When I do put top coat, I don't always use top coat, but when I do, I prefer Sally Hansen Insta Dry. Classic. It comes in a box on the wall at like Target or whatever. Um, yeah. I was for a while on the train of the uh, New York color, what was it called? The clear one. I don't think I still have a bottle here. They discontinued it because, I don't know, I guess people weren't buying their actual top coats because their clear polish worked just as well and only cost a dollar. Look that up if you uh, are interested in that saga, but they stopped selling it. Um, and so I had to go back to this one, which is, you know, more than one dollar, but it's not too expensive. It's, uh, I think some people compare it to Seshvit. Um, which is a popular top coat. Also, side note, everyone, mis not everyone, I've seen people mispronounce Seshvite. It's just, yeah, it's Seshvite. It's not Seche Vite, it's French. It just means quick dry. And it's Seshvite. Very good. Uh, anyway, yeah, but that stuff has like, I don't know. Actually, I don't know how many of the... The big bad chemicals are in the Sally Hansen either, so I shouldn't complain about the big bad chemicals. Um, but yeah, it's it's cheaper because you get it at the drugstore. Our big sister Sally Hansen, looking out for us. So what I am doing here is just cleaning up my edges because I've got some glitter and polish on my cuticles. And I want to make sure that there's not any polish on my cuticles because then it dries and then it's like a, a whole ridge thing that'll get caught on a sweater that I'm pulling over my head and just peel the whole thing right off. Um, you don't want that. So I just sort of use this little brush. I showed it off in the other nail video, but this is a um, e.l.f. E.L.F. Eyes, Lips, Face, you know, that brand. They sell at Target and this is literally $1. Um, and this is the concealer brush. Um, I got this as a tip from Nouveau Cheap, actually, that blog I was mentioning. Um, because it is, yeah, like, super cheap and really easy. Like, everyone's favorite cleanup brushes, like, ask them, but is it a dollar? Because, like, if it's more than a dollar, you should really try out the concealer brush from ELF. Because, yeah, I kind of stock up. Like, I buy two or three at a time. And then when they start getting wacky, I can replace them. And I'm just dipping it in this pure acetone. Um, yeah, I I think when I got this bottle, they weren't yet selling them in the um, like the store brand. But this is actually store brand acetone. Not that it matters. Like my husband has a big can of acetone in the garage that I'm trying to remember what he actually uses it for but acetone's pretty industrial you know and you can get a huge can of it for super cheap and so I'll probably just be able to use some of that next time and not even bother but it's only 99 cents for the normal size bottle anyway at the beauty aisle so it's not even like it's an expenditure there all right See, the fact that I didn't have to do top coat just means that now I'm done. And it's already feeling kind of dry to the touch. I'm not going to like go do chores right now. I am exempt from chores right now. Um, just to sort of let this dry. But uh, it just it feels good to have something on my nails again and to look kind of nice for a change. And this will be, they just they look more put together, you know, when they're like a, it's like foundation. It's very like a nude color. It's like when you put foundation on your face, but before you blend it, I guess. But yeah, it's just like, um, you don't see all of the cracks and bits and the bits where it's peeling or dirty underneath or whatever. I just, it looks clean and nice. I missed this. So this is what I'm doing for my party tomorrow. 
uh, thank you guys for watching. If you watched all of that, man, like, I'm I'm a fan of you too. Um, you should know that. Um, and apparently, I can talk about my nails. My husband is probably very grateful that I'm talking to you guys instead of to him. Um, because, yeah, I could talk his ear off about cuticles and stuff all day. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, catch me in the next video on Tuesday's The Sims video. And then again on Thursday and then next Sunday. So, uh, don't forget to subscribe either. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.